film criticism is in a weird place right now where uh, some people are avoiding negative reviews because they don't want to negatively critique things. And then other people just feel like art is art and art is relative and all that stuff. Or you could just like a movie. This is Lyft. Uh, directed by F. Gary Gray. This is a Netflix film. Stars Kevin Hart, uh, Gugu Mbadara, uh, the Vincent, Vincent D'Onofrio, Jean Reno, uh, Jacob Batalan, uh, Billy Magnuson. It's got, a, it's got a bunch of people in this, anyway. Um, and uh, Sam Worthington. I always forget him. That dude, his career should be huge. He stars in the Avatar franchise. <laughs> anyway, so this is F. Gary Gray, who kind of understands how to make fun action films. He has made some really good ones, like Set It Off with Queen Latifah, J. Pickett Smith, that crew, Kim Barry Elise. Um, he's got under his belt uh, The Negotiator with Samuel L. Jackson, Kevin Spacey. That was a pretty solid film, I thought, anyway. Uh, Law Abiding Citizen is a lot better than I thought it would be with Gerard Butler. That was that was pretty good. That was before Gerard started just making a ton of films. That just I don't know. I don't even know what he's doing anymore with his career. But uh, yeah, trying to become the next Liam Neeson. <laughs> um, and uh, he also has done both Friday and Straight Out of Compton. So uh, his his portfolio is all over the place. Not to mention the Fate of the Furious. So he dropped into the the Furious franchise as well. He's, his portfolio is all over the place. He's done a ton of music videos for a bunch of really important artists. A lot of them have passed, which is really interesting, like Barry, Barry White, uh, Whitney Houston, he's got TLC, um, yeah. he's also got R. Kelly on there, which I'm sure <laughs> there's a nice little gap in his film directing, and it's around the time that he's working with R. Kelly, and I'm sure he just needed some time to meditate. Fair. Um, so, yeah, uh, it, this film has all the goods. It also has audio description on Netflix by Descriptive Video Works, which I was really disappointed that they didn't get the opportunity to name their narrator, because I feel like they always get the opportunity to, to name their narrator. Here they did not. Here, just, it's like, Descriptive Video Works. And it says something about, like, the, and the credits from the opening. I didn't know if that meant from the start of the credits, or did they transplant opening like the credits at the beginning of the film to hear because they couldn't say them like they couldn't talk there was too much action happening on top of credits anyway food for thought one way or the other um there's no narrator i have no idea who did this uh it's pretty pretty well done in terms of audio description narration i didn't really have a problem with it it does sound a little does sound like it's not their best work. Uh, the mixing is not great. There's one action sequence where suddenly the narrator gets louder, almost like she was patched in, like they redid the narration, and it was at a different volume level, and she just kind of, <laughs> just all of a sudden they're on a plane fighting, and she's for some reason louder than than normal, normal. But it sounds, it sounds like it's been added, like it was recorded during a different session. And they're trying to, like, put it in sort of like how we do with uh, a lot of dialogue in post. Um, so that would be my my biggest criticism of the audio description. But the actual, like, text and what they're writing and uh, does a pretty good job of keeping up with the film. It's been compared a lot to Ocean's Eleven. I don't know why it's not being complained to every dumb plane film we've ever had. Because that's kind of what I felt like more here is... It's not, it's not like a, trying to be a fun movie. It's not trying to be uh, the world's most intelligent film of the year. Uh, I don't think that's what that is. You know, um, F. Gary Gray also directed the Italian Job remake with Mark, Ra Mark, 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 Mark Wahlberg, Marky Mark, and Charlize Theron, and Donald Sutherland, and those people. That film isn't necessarily known for being like, wow. This is this film is terrific. It's legendary. It's just kind of fun and it just kind of works. Like, but it's not 
it's not a classic, but people enjoy it. That's kind of what Lyft is. Lyft reminds me of the 90s with Passenger 57 and Executive Decision and Turbulence and, uh, you know, all those movies that we had, uh, Drop Zone and stuff that involved somebody needing to go up into a plane for some reason and hijinks ensues. Air Force One, there's another one. Um, we used to love doing that in the 90s. We did a little bit less of it and... Last year we did Plane with Gerard Butler, so we had a little bit of that. Um, but here, Kevin Hart's doing it. It's ridiculous. It's definitely, F. Gary Gray definitely spent a little bit too much time in the Fast and Furious franchise where, like, anything can happen. And they have this, at one point, they have this, like, sort of, like, clear stealth plane that's just also, like, a private jet. It's not actually working for the government or anything. This guy just happens to have, like, a, his private plane is clear for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, uh, it, it works with the plot. Everything that's put into this film uh, is to work with the plot. Like, it just comes back around later. There's nothing that, that just happens to be in this film. The one thing that they do poorly is um, they start at a certain point in the film, and then they give history to Kevin Hart's character, um, who is the leader of the thief organization, and Gugu Mbadara, who at the time works for Interpol, turns out they had a past. But we don't, they don't really go into that that much. They just kind of like, there's like a picture that's shown at one point and some like light references. But you never really actually know what their history was. <laughs> it's just kind of like, yeah, I guess at one point they hooked up? Did they date? How long? When did they know each other? There's a lot of questions about that, that 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 whole thing didn't really work for me because they didn't really do anything with it. This film also has a broadcast. It does. It really is trying to do the Ocean's Eleven thing where it's like Avengers Assemble and it doesn't really use them all, but then I would argue that Ocean's Eleven doesn't really use them all. Um, it, it has some people that are used far less than others and you can kind of see that as you go down the list of stars in the Ocean's Eleven film. You know, you've got George Clooney all the way down to the Asian actor who was the guy who could crawl into tight spaces. You know, did he have a lot of character development? No, he was there because he could do one specific thing. He didn't get like a ton of, uh, <laughs> a ton of range of development. Uh, they, they they were busy trying to balance the fact that they had Clooney, Pitt, Damon, you know, all in the same uh, little grouping in addition to Julia Roberts and, uh, you know, anyway. So, yeah, it's it's just not um, exactly uh, balanced. Uh, I I did think Vincent D'Onofrio was fun, though. So he's A lot of people have given him crap for being in this. I didn't know it was him. Uh, I did, I had to look up who was who later in the end. I was like, hey, that was Vincent D'Onofrio? That was not bad. He did a good job of disguising his voice, which is something he's not usually good at. Um, I had him pegged as the Jacob Babylon character, actually, to be totally honest. And then that was Jacob Babylon. And I'm just, okay, <laughs> cool. Good for you, Jacob Babylon. <laughs> I, I didn't know that. Anyway, um... It's not It's not trying to be smart. This is not that film. This is a fun film you put on. It lasts for two hours, and there's some action sequences and some silliness and cool gadget tricks and, and stuff that makes absolutely no sense in a film. But we've watched that before. We've had tons of these films where we've had action sequences that make absolutely no sense. And we've we just sit back and we're like, yeah, this is awesome. This is really cool. I like this kind of stuff. It makes no, we could never do this in real life, but it's really cool to see it on the screen. That's always kind of the thing about cinema is you can put stuff on the screen that you could never do in real life and you do it on the screen. It looks really cool, you know? And people are just like, yeah, that was fun. We know it's not real. That would never happen. But, um, I don't know. Are, are we just expecting everything to be hyper realistic and everything has to aim for awards? I just, I don't know why there isn't a place for um, intentionally crowd-pleasing 
dumb action films like this. Uh, this is, and I'm using dumb in the best way possible because it's not meant to be, uh, it's not meant to really be a dig. Uh, I didn't think the actual overall plot of the film was dumb. It's just, it's not, it doesn't want to overplay its hand. It wants people to be able to turn it on and then just sit back. It doesn't want you to have to overthink things. So if you feel like it's not reinventing the wheel, I don't think it wanted to. To be totally honest, I don't think at any point in this in this process did they think, yeah, we're going to reinvent the wheel and become the best we've ever been. But I could say that about a lot of action films. I don't think they're actually trying to become the best they, best in their genre every single time out of the gate. I think we've been spoiled with, with the occasional John Wick film that is like some sort of like, uh, you know, high action, high art action. But we used to enjoy stuff like this. <laughs> this, too, this stuff used to be fine. Um, and, uh, and now it's, I guess now because it's being released in a different decade, uh, and we turn our nose up at it and it has Netflix in front of it. Dude, Netflix has released way worse films than this. Like, just way worse. Uh, with Slap with the Netflix logo on it. I'm not saying this is great, but uh, I've seen a lot of doom and gloom thrown this way, and a lot of like, oh, oh, I can't believe I had to sit through Lyft. Really? What do you normally sit through? Do you just watch Blue is the Warmest Color on repeat? Like, <laughs> what's what's your jam? You know, like, what do you do? Is this film never meant for you? Um, yeah, it's it's really just it's not. It's not that terrible. This is not the Meg 2, the trench. Listen, when that came out, I really wanted to be able to defend it. I wanted to be that guy who could come in and find a reason to say, this is awesome. I couldn't do that. I liked the first Meg. Didn't like the second one. Lift? I'm not giving it an A, you know? But uh, did I hate it? Did I hate myself for watching it? No, I didn't. I it it reminded me of, of, you know, how fun it was to watch Steven Seagal die in, like, five minutes of executive decision back in the day, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's just, we used to have fun in planes in the 90s, and now we don't. And <laughs> I think, I think this is that, this feels like it could have been, if this had dropped in the 90s, I don't think anybody would have blinked. I think critics would have just been like, oh, it's just another one of those plane action movies that we have. Cool. Moving on. Uh, but no, instead, it's it's got to have some sort of high standard set to it that is really not what it's going for at all. When you have a glass plane flying through the sky, I don't think this film is trying for anything. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> I don't think that's what this film is. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and Jean, Jean Reno is... Is underutilized, I would say, which is a shame because I, I was I remember thinking like a couple months ago, I was like, "Where's Jean Reno? What is he doing? What is what's what's he been up to?" Uh, and now he pops up in this, and I'm like, oh, "I want more. I just, he's so good. I want more from Leon, the professional." Anyway, yes, uh, watch Lift if you want. Um, it's. There's no doom and gloom necessary here. I had I had enough fun with it. Uh, I'm gonna give Lift a B minus. I've seen worse this year. I've seen films that I've not liked this year more than than Lift. So um, I think Lift has yeah problems, a couple problems, but um, I think it wanted to be dumb fun, and I dumb fun it was. So sign up for dumb dumb fun anyway. Also subscribe to me. Thanks for watching. Thanks. Uh, I have a website, Mac the Movie Guy, X Threads Instagram at Mac the Movie Guy. Audio description project adp.acb.org will let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it. And the adna.org, that's the adna.org, will let you know who's narrating your favorite films and television series. That's it for me today. I will watch something else and see you guys on the other side.